Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining this webinar today presented by the WHA Virtual Library. I'm Tyler Ostapik, a librarian with the WHA Virtual Library. And today we're going to be looking at one of the more popular health literature resources, PubMed. This session is being recorded. The recording as well as a copy of the slides will be shared with you after the presentation. If you have questions, you can use the Q&A option in the Zoom interface. Or if you'd prefer to ask a question using your mic, please hit the raise hand button and I can unmute you. Feel free to ask questions at any time and there will also be some time at the end for any additional questions you might have. Before we take a look at PubMed, I'm going to briefly mention the WHA virtual library services available to you. Then I'm going to quickly go over the scope of PubMed. After that, I'll demo some of the features and tools in PubMed. And along the way, we'll do some searching and exploring of results so you can get an idea of how you can use PubMed to find information that's useful to you. Then lastly, we'll look at some of the personal account features in the account dashboard. If you're a Delroche staff from an eligible community health agency or from an eligible personal care home, you have a number of electronic resources and library services available to you through the WHA Virtual Library. This includes access to a number of different information tools and resources, as well as literature searches, document delivery, and education and training sessions. It also includes access to a number of the publications you may find in PubMed. So as you may know, PubMed is a free resource that supports the search and retrieval of biomedical and life sciences literature. The PubMed database contains more than 34 million citations and abstracts. It does not include full text journal articles. However, links to full text are provided when available from other sources. Not everything is free to access, but you can access many of the items for free through PubMed Central, open access journals, or through the WHA virtual library. To get a sense of the overall content of PubMed, here's an image representing the sources of PubMed records. A large majority of these citations in PubMed are from Medline journals, which are selected by a National Library of Medicine Advisory Committee. PubMed also includes citations for the full text articles that are in PubMed Central, a collection of journals selected for archiving by the National Library of Medicine, which is represented by the blue circle, as well as individual articles collected by the National Library of Medicine in compliance with funder policies on public access, represented by the green circle. Between Medline and PMC, there are more than 7,000 journals regularly added to PubMed. PubMed also includes records from more than 7,000 free online reports, monographs, and other resources on biomedicine, health, and life sciences topics from NCBI Bookshelf, which is represented by the yellow circle in the graphic. Currently, there's also a preprints pilot going on that involves adding preprints for COVID-related research to PubMed Central. You can identify an item as a preprint based on the note you'll see at the top of the page when you look at it. The inclusion of preprints is just one of many somewhat recent changes to PubMed. In 2019, PubMed released an update that included a number of considerable changes to the interface and a few new features. I'll be discussing some of the newer features as we go, but the main thing you need to keep in mind is that if you're familiar with the old PubMed interface, some things in the new PubMed may not work in exactly the same way. For example, an identical query in the new PubMed may yield slightly different results than in the old PubMed. A more recent change was made to the login process in 2021. It used to be possible to use a separate NCBI username and password for a PubMed account, but in 2021, NCBI began transitioning to relying on third-party account credentials. This means if you're signing up for a new account, you will need to use credentials from an existing account, such as a Gmail or a Microsoft account. If you already have an NCBI account, you can still access your account using your old username and password, but NCBI will force you to attach a third-party account once you've logged in. Having an account isn't mandatory, you can use PubMed without one, but it does enable some additional features such as saving your searches for later, setting up email alerts, and creating bibliographies. You can create an account by clicking on the login button in the top right hand corner that you can see here, and then clicking sign up at the bottom, and you can see some of the account options as I mentioned before Microsoft and Google accounts are both options you can use. You can access PubMed from the WHA virtual library homepage. So just from our homepage here under Access Databases, you can click on the PubMed button to immediately go to PubMed, or you can click on See More for our full list of resources. 
and then click on the P and PubMed. When you click on one of the links on our website, you may be prompted for your virtual library login credentials. Using one of the links on our site instead of going to the PubMed site directly will allow you to see the full text articles available to you through the WHA virtual library and will also make it easier for you to request articles through the library. And I'll show you how to do that a bit later. The PubMed homepage contains a number of useful links. You'll see at the top, there's a search bar where you can immediately start your search. As I mentioned, there's also this login button in the top right-hand corner. And once you're logged in, you'll see your email address or your username for your account. If you scroll to the bottom, you'll see trending articles, as well as a list of new articles from highly accessed journals. And below that, there's currently some COVID-19 information and useful links. The homepage also includes a link to PubMed FAQs and user guide, which can be useful if you're not sure how something works in PubMed or want information on how to use PubMed more effectively. There are also a number of links to various tools on the PubMed homepage, and we're going to look at a few of these now. One of the tools you can access from the homepage is the single citation matcher. This tool helps you to identify a single citation when you have some but not all of the information pertaining to a particular publication. So say for example you remembered reading an article in the journal Nutrition about depression and vitamin D. From the PubMed homepage here under find you can click on the single citation matcher and then you could put in the information you do remember so the name of the journal if you remember reading it in Nutrition and it's on the topic of vitamin D and depression. And click search. And you can see PubMed has tried to identify the citation we're looking for. And the top result here is the citation we're trying to find. It's in the journal Nutrition. And this is the title. The regular PubMed search also has a built-in citation sensor. So if you start to type in information that looks like a citation, PubMed will try to match it to a specific citation for you. So with our example here, say we had the author name and we knew it was in the journal Nutrition. We can type that into the basic search here, or we could do that on the homepage and then click search. And you can see at the top here, PubMed has tried to find a single citation for us. And the first citation it found is the item we we're looking for. It also includes a more basic set of results underneath in case you aren't looking for a single citation and you're actually looking for a set of results based on the topic you search for. The clinical queries tool, also accessible from the homepage, uses predefined filters to help you quickly refine PubMed searches on clinical or disease specific topics. So just from the PubMed homepage here, under find, you can see there's this clinical queries link. You can click on that and say we were interested in treatments for Lewy body dementia. We could type in Lewy body dementia and then use the clinical studies filter and check therapy because we're looking for therapies and treatments. And we can leave this broad and click search. And you can see you immediately get a set of results based on this filter. You can limit the scope of the search, which will basically just use more specific terms to filter your results. So you can see we have over a thousand results here, but if you click on narrow and narrow the scope, we get a manageable set of 68 results. And you can click on this link here, see filter details to see how the filter is working. There's also a COVID-19 filter, which is a somewhat recent addition that allows you to filter based on a specific aspect of the disease. So for example, if you're interested in finding out if vitamin D prevented COVID-19, you can search for vitamin D, select COVID-19, and then select prevention. And you can see you immediately get a set of results on the topic. So this is especially a great tool if you're looking for information on COVID-19 and you quickly want to filter to a specific aspect of the disease. You can see there's a number of options available. Now that we've explored some of the tools on the PubMed homepage, we're going to look at the PubMed search. As I mentioned earlier, there's a search bar on the homepage that you can use to start your search. With the update to the PubMed interface, they've tried to make searching in PubMed similar to Google or other common search engines. 
Their recommendation is that you use simple, specific phrases that describe what you're looking for and let PubMed do the work behind the scenes to find the best results. When you type something into the PubMed search box, there's an automatic mapping process that finds relevant synonyms for the terms you're looking for. It also uses a machine learning algorithm that is trained on aggregated user searches to identify and rank the items that are best matched for your search. So for example, if we were interested in the effect of yogurt on blood pressure, we could type in effect yogurt blood pressure in the search box on the homepage here and then hit enter or click search. And you can see we get 91 results and they will be sorted by best match. So in theory, the PubMed algorithm has identified the top results here as the most relevant to our search topic. And then the further you go down the list, the rest, less relevant the items might be. You can see how the PubMed search is working in the back end if you click on this advanced button here and then click on details in the search history section. So this is what was going be on behind the scenes when we conducted our search. You can see that our search for the term blood pressure search for the mesh term, which is the subject heading for blood pressure. It also brought in various synonyms such as arterial pressure. For yogurt, it included the British and American spelling. So we have yogurt with an H and yogurt without an H. And it also included singular and plural. And these are some of the changes that were implemented in the new interface. For effect, it also added various endings for the words, so affecting, effective, effectively. Now it's important to note that often a general search like this will be very broad because of the automatic term mapping. So for blood pressure, for example, this search also included not only blood pressure in all fields, but a search for blood and pressure separately. So that would include potentially articles on say applying pressure to reduce blood loss. So it's just important to keep in mind that this can be very broad and you need to think about how the automatic term mapping is working on the back end. As I mentioned, PubMed claims to support phrase searching. So you could also search for example, more of a sentence like does yogurt have an effect on blood pressure. In this case, we get the same number of results, 91. And if we go to the advanced page, we can see why that's the case. So if you click on details here, you can see there's a little exclamation mark or warning sign. And it tells you at the bottom here that PubMed has ignored all of these words because it considers them unimportant. And that's why the phrase searching is able to work and you're able to type in a sentence and get a similar set of results. Now, this doesn't always work perfectly depending on your sentence. So for example, if we added, does the consumption of yogurt affect blood pressure? We only get 51 results in this case because PubMed has just determine consumption to be an important word, even though in this case, it's it, the phrase has the same meaning, whether or not we included consumption, but because PubMed considers it an important word, you can see here that we've sort of artificially limited our results. So when you're adding sort of filler words, you want to be careful that you're not limiting your results and missing out on relevant items. In general, the best approach is probably to just use the terms that are most specific to your search topic. So in our case, if we use just yogurt and blood pressure and don't even include the term effect, then we get even more results. So you want to be careful on the terms that you're using and just make sure you're using the most specific and useful terms possible. Depending on your topic, when you search like this, it may bring in a lot of results. So you do need to sort of find a balance when you're doing your searching. But keep in mind that PubMed will always rank the best match items at the top of your list. Now that we've conducted a basic search, we can take a look at the list of the results. The results page has a number of useful features for managing, refining, and sorting your search results. At the top right hand side, if you click on the display options, you can change how the results are displayed. 
So for example, you can arrange them by publication date here. You could select to view the full abstract of the articles instead of just a summary. And you can see the summary is sort of just a snippet of the abstract and it makes it a bit easier to scroll through the list. The arrow here, you can click on to page through your results. On the left-hand side, you have a visual representation of publications over time, and you can slide the dots to limit to a certain period. So for example, you can limit to 2012 to 2022. Below, there are several filters such as article type, which you can use to limit results. So for example, if you're interested in systematic reviews, you could click on that button and limit your results just to systematic reviews. There are also a number of additional filters that you can access by clicking on this additional filters button. So for example, you could limit to a particular age group and click on show, and then it will show up on the left hand side here, and we can click on that to further limit our results. Any filters you've applied will appear at the top of your results. And it will let you know which filters have been applied and you can click clear all to remove all of the filters for your list. Beside each result, you can click on site to get a citation for that particular item, and you can copy that and paste it, or click on the copy button here, or you can download the citation to import into citation management software such as EndNote or RefWorks, for example. There's also a share button, so you can share on Twitter or Facebook, or you can obtain the permalink and then share it however you prefer. If you're interested in multiple items, you can click on the boxes beside each of them. And then there's a number of different options available to you. You can click on send to and click clipboard to send the items to a clipboard and the link will appear up here. And this is sort of just a temporary location where as you're going through searching for things, you can add various items to your clipboard and then come back to them later. The clipboard does only last for eight hours though. So you'll want to do something with these items before they disappear. Once you've got the items you want in your clipboard, you can click on the link to view them and then you have additional options available. You can also send to a collection if you're logged into an account. So we can select three here and send to collection. And you can add to an existing collection if you already have a name collection, or you can create a new collection. And we'll create a new collection on blood pressure yogurt and click add. And this will add these items to that new collection that we've created. You can also send the items to the citation manager, and that will create a file that you can then import into citation management software, such as RefWorks or Zotero. You also have the save option here. You can save as a summary. So it will be a list of citations that then you could paste into say a Word document or a report. And you can save in a variety of different formats as well. You can also email the citations you've selected to yourself or to somebody else who might be interested, say a colleague who is interested in the topic. So those are some ways to sort, filter, and manage your results. But if you're particularly interested in a single result and want to find out more information, you can click on the citation. So for example, you can click on number four here, which will bring us to the record page for that item. On the far left and right-hand side of the page, you can click on the arrows to navigate easily through your results. So you can see if I click on this here, it'll go to the third item in our list. And if I click on this, it'll go to the fifth item in our list, this one being the fourth item. At the very top of the page, you have the search results link that will return you to the search results page. Under that, you're provided with information concerning the publication, including the journal name, the publication date, the publication type, as well as the title of the publication and the authors. And you can click on one of the author's names if you want to quickly search for that particular author in PubMed. The PMID is a unique ID used for items in PubMed. And the DOI is a unique identifier used across different databases. 
Below the publication info, you'll see the abstract if available. On the right hand side, we have the same site option that we saw on the results page. And there's also a favorites button if you want to add this particular item to your favorites if you're logged into an account. You also have the share options we saw before. And there's a page navigation section where you can jump to a particular section of the page. One of the most important sections is this section at the top on the right hand side for full text links. So this is how you gain access to the full text of the individual articles. You can see here that the free full text is available in this case through UWA, but that won't always be the case. If the free text isn't available and there's nothing that says free full text, if you open PubMed from the WHA virtual library website, you'll have this check library access button and you can click on that. When you check that button, if the library has the item, you may be brought to a page that looks like this, where you might have an option to download the PDF or get the article link. So in our case here, you can see we have the article link when we've clicked on this check library access button. I'll just show you again how that works. So you can click on article link and that will bring you to the publisher page for the article. And you can see we have access to it here. Now, sometimes instead of bringing you to that page, it will bring you to our catalog. So you can see for the case of this article here, And it may just take a second to load. You can see it's brought us to our catalog. And you are able to click on any of the links that have WRHA in front of them to get access to the full text. So you have two links available to you here, WRHA free full text or WRHA free e-journals. And clicking on either of those links will bring you to the page where you can access the article. In some cases, the WHA virtual library may not have direct access to the item you're looking for, which is the case for this article here. So if we click on the publisher link, you can see that the publisher is charging $65 for the article. You should never have to pay that even if we don't have one of those WHA links. You can request the article for free through the WHA virtual library and we can provide that to you. So if we go back to this page here, you can click on the check library access button again. And then you may need to sign in to see all of the options. So I'll just do that quickly. And you can see in this case here, there are no WHA links. There's just this option WHA order sources. So what you can do if you want to request the article is click on that link. And that will bring you to this page here where you just need to put in your virtual library login info and click login. And then you can see this form was automatically populated with all of the information from PubMed concerning this article. All you need to do is just scroll down and provide your contact information and then click submit. And we'll send you the article usually within one to three business days and you don't have to pay anything for it. So never pay that cost on the publisher site. You can always request an article through the WHA virtual library by clicking on that check library access button. Getting back to the record page for the individual citation, below the abstract, you can find similar articles. These are articles that PubMed has determined are similar based on a variety of criteria. Underneath that, you will see articles that have cited the item you're viewing, and there may also be a list of references. All of these can be very useful for identifying similar publications on a particular topic. Below that, you will see publication type. The MeSH terms below publication type are medical subject headings that have been assigned to this particular publication. The asterisk that you can see beside some of them indicate that these headings were determined to be a central topic of the publication by the indexer who applied the headings. Below the MeSH terms, you will see related information and a link out section 
for additional sources of information relevant to the item you're viewing. Not every item in PubMed will have mesh headings, but when they are assigned, they can be a great indication of what the item is about. If there's a subject heading that seems particularly relevant to your topic, you can click on the arrow beside it to add it to your search or to search for the term in PubMed. So for example, in our case, for our search on yogurt and blood pressure, hypertension seems like it would be relevant. So we can click on the arrow here and click search in PubMed or add to search if we want to. If you're not sure whether a term is applicable or you want to find out more about it, you can click on this search in mesh, which will bring up the mesh thesaurus. And then you can click on the term to view additional information. The Mesh Thesaurus is a controlled vocabulary thesaurus used for indexing articles in PubMed. Mesh terms have been assigned to approximately 90% of publications in PubMed. At the top of each Mesh term page, there will be a scope note, which can help you determine whether the term is relevant for your search. Underneath the note, there are subheadings that can further qualify the term you're searching for if you're only interested in a particular aspect of the topic. Entry terms, which you can see here, are synonyms for the term. So we can see our term hypertension is used for the term high blood pressure. And as you can see at the bottom here, the thesaurus is hierarchical with narrower terms being grouped under broader relevant terms. So all of these terms are grouped under hypertension and hypertension is grouped under vascular diseases. PubMed defaults to including all narrower terms when adding a mesh headings. So all of these narrower terms will be included if you search for hypertension, but you can remove the narrower terms and just search for the main heading by click on, clicking on this do not include mesh terms found below box right here. And the other box here restricts to mesh major topic, which were the asterisks we saw on the record page. If you determine a mesh term is relevant, you can click add to search builder in the top right hand corner here. And we'll just try that again. And that will add it to your search. And then you can click on search by med to search for that particular term. Combining mesh terms can be a great way to potentially help to focus your search on the publications that are most relevant. and can also help you pick up some of the items you may otherwise have missed. For example, in our case, hypertension does seem to be relevant for our search on yogurt and blood pressure. But if you remember that automatic term mapping for a basic search, it didn't include hypertension. So we may be missing out on relevant articles if we don't search for hypertension as well. And the easiest way to combine different terms is with the PubMed search builder, which is found on the advanced page. So from here, you can click on advanced or from the home page here, you could also click on advanced. The query builder on the advanced search screen enables you to combine different terms and take more control over your search. You can combine terms using the Boolean operators and or not, and we'll look for both terms, or we'll look for either term, so it's the most broad, and not will look for one term and not another. When you conduct a basic search in PubMed, the default is to search for the terms throughout the entirety of the citation, including the title and abstract and subject headings, for example. And you can see the default here is all fields, However, on the advanced search page here, we can specify that we only want to find terms in a specific field, including journal name, author, title and abstract, and various other fields. You can select a specific field on the left-hand side here. So for example, we could select the title and then type in blood pressure and click add. And then because hypertension is sort of a synonym for blood pressure or for high blood pressure in our case, we can use an or to combine the two terms. So we're telling PubMed that we want to look for this term or this term in the title. And then we need to add yogurt as well. And we can add that with an and because we want to find one of these two terms and the term yogurt. And PubMed will add brackets for you, but just make sure that your or terms are included in their own set of brackets. So PubMed knows that you're looking for this or that term and then this other term. And once you've created them and put them in your query builder here, you can click on search. And you can see we get five results. We can also limit our search further by putting quotation marks around blood pressure, which will tell PubMed to search it as a phrase. So instead of searching blood and pressure like we saw earlier, it will search for the phrase blood pressure. But if the phrase is indexed, 
in PubMed, then limiting to a specific field will have the same effect. So in this case, we don't need to use quotation marks, but they can be useful, especially if you're doing a more basic search and don't want to use the automatic term mapping. We can also expand our search using truncation. Truncation is used to look for all of the various endings of a particular word. You can use this feature by putting an asterisk at the end of a, a set of letters. Truncation in the old PubMed used to be limited to 600 variations, but in the new PubMed, it will find all relevant variations for you. The caveat is that it won't work for terms that are shorter than four letters. So we can expand our search here by adding an asterisk on yogurt, which will then tell PubMed we want to look for yogurt as well as yogurts. And we can do the same thing for hypertension. So that will tell PubMed we're looking for any words that start with hypertense. So hypertense, hypertensive, hypertension, et cetera. And we can click search. And you can see we get 13 results. So that's a great start, but we still don't have that many results. And there are probably some more relevant results out there. And we can use the mesh terms that we discovered earlier to add to our results list. We can also do that from the advanced page. So from the advanced page here, we can click on mesh terms. Now we could go back to the thesaurus to double check the terms, but we already know there are some useful mesh terms. So we can just type them in here and click on the show index to make sure they're in mesh. So we can see blood pressure is there. And then we can click add to add that to our search. And then we can do the same thing for hypertension because we saw it in mesh earlier. So right now we're looking for these two subject headings or either the subject heading or the subject heading, but we want to look in the title as well. So we can switch this to title and then type in blood pressure and then do the same thing for hypertension. In this case, PubMed's added a few too many brackets. So we just want to take some of these out and ensure that all of these OR terms here are included in their own set of brackets. So this is telling PubMed we're looking for this subject heading or this subject heading or this term in the title or this term in the title. And then we can combine that with our term yogurt. And then we can do an OR for the subject heading for yogurt. We'll see if there's one available. So we have mesh term here, yogurt and show index. And there is a term. And now we can add that as well. Let's try that again. And then just remove the extra brackets again. And we want to make sure our yogurt terms are enclosed in their own set of brackets. So this is telling PubMed that we're looking for blood pressure as a subject heading, hypertension as a subject heading, blood pressure in the title or hypertension in the title, any of those, as well as yogurt in the title or yogurt as a subject heading. And you can see we get a manageable set of 39 results. And these appear like they're much more relevant than the original set of results that we brought in through the automatic term mapping. Now that you have these results, you may want to manage the citations or save the search for the future. And the PubMed account features can help you to do this. Once you're happy with your search, you can click on the create alert button to save it. You can adjust the name. By default, it's the search term. So we'll change it to blood pressure and yogurt. And you can adjust your search terms as well, but I think we're pretty happy with our search at this point, so we don't need to. You can choose to receive email updates. So what that means is as new items are added to PubMed, if they show up in this search based on your search terms, then PubMed will notify you that something new has been added that you haven't seen before. So it's a great way to keep up to date on new literature on a specific topic that you're interested in. And you can choose how frequent frequently you want to receive the alerts. For now, I'm going to click no because I don't want to receive any emails on this topic. And then we can click save. And you can see we get a notification that our new search has been saved. When you click in the top right hand corner from a PubMed page where your 
account information is if you're logged in you'll see this dashboard option and that's how you get access to a lot of the different account features you can see under saved searches here we have the search that we just saved today and we can click on this little gear to adjust the search and indicate whether we want to receive email alerts you can also see the collection we saved earlier on hypertension and yogurt and we can click on the gear if we want to make the collection public so that we can share it with others. You can also click on edit to view a list of the citations, or you can click on the name to view your set of results in PubMed. The My Bibliography feature is a way to build a citation list of your own publications. And the filter feature down here allows you to create new custom filters. So when you click on manage filters, there's this option here to create a custom filter and you can use query terms to create that filter or there's a bunch of built in filters as well, so, for example, if you find that you're often looking for me for information on individuals who are over 65. You can click on properties and then age groups and you can select ages 65 plus. And then once you've selected that it will show up in your search. At the top here under my NCBI filters when you're logged into your account. So it's a great way to easily filter items if you're constantly using the same filter and don't want to have to go down and add it each time. It will show up at the top here and you can just conduct your search and easily filter the results. The last section on the dashboard is the recent activity section. Now you'll notice this gives me my recent activity in Mesh, but not my recent activity in PubMed. If you want to see your search results in PubMed, just remember you can click on the advanced button. And then you have your history and search details here. You can click download to download your search history, or you can delete your search history as well if you no longer need it. And that ends our PubMed update today. I just have a quick summary of some of the main takeaways from today's session. Remember to access PubMed from the WHA Virtual Library site to take full advantage of the full text access available to you. Keep in mind the interface and some features have changed over the past few years, including how you log in. You can take a Google-like approach to your basic searching, but be aware of how the automatic term mapping is working behind the scenes. Use the available filters and limiters to narrow your results. You can use Boolean operators and mesh terms to refine your search, and there are various account features available to people who decide to create a personal account. Thank you for attending today, and I encourage you to sign up for future webinars that might be of interest. Both the slides and recording this presentation will be shared with you in the next few days. If you have any questions, please add them to the chat or feel free to send me an email, and I'll stick around for a bit to see if there are any questions, and thanks again.